Once IPython Notebook is up and running, start by launching a new notebook. The notebook will open in a new tab. You can't see the new tabs since I have my browser in full screen mode. This is what you see when you open a new notebook. A standard command bar with group commands like File, Edit, and View, and a number of shortcut buttons. The most interesting item in an IPython notebook is the cell with the blinking cursor, which looks surprisingly like an input from an IPython console session. While this is one mode of this input area, it can take a number of other useful forms, including areas for headings, non-Python text, and even LaTeX math. To start, Let's begin by renaming the notebook by clicking on the title at the top of the window. A modal dialog appears with an input to rename the notebook. Names can have spaces, although notebooks exported to straight Python should not have spaces in the name. So now that the notebook has been renamed, save it to a file. Saving saves both the current version and creates a checkpoint. Checkpoints are useful since they can be restored to reset the notebook to a previous state. I don't have any checkpoints yet, but saving shows one will be created. This notebook was launched with a standard IPython notebook command, and so no Python modules are loaded. In this demo, I want to use PyLab, which can be loaded using the magic word PyLab, which is available in the notebook just like it is in the console session. Now that the command has been entered, the cell needs to be executed. The simplest method is to click on the play button in the shortcut toolbar. This number corresponds directly to the numbered input and output in an IPython console session. We can see that NumPy and matplotlib are both loaded and that the Qt4 backend is being used. To test the environment, we can create a NumPy array. Executing the cell doesn't produce any output, so let's try producing a plot. The plot appears in a separate window since the backend is Qt4, which is fine, but it's usually better to have the plots appear inline which means in the browser inside the notebook. You can use PyLab with the extra command inline to load PyLab using the inline backend. Executing the cell produces the same output as above, only no mention of the backend. To check that inline mode is working, try running the same plot command again. As you can see, the same figure appears, only now in the browser. It is generally more useful to use IPython Notebook with the inline command rather than having figures pop up in a separate window. Once the environment is set up, there are some useful shortcuts that need to be introduced. Start by entering a few lines with commands, including a plot. Enter starts a new line but does not execute it. We can tell this is the case since the brackets next to the in label do not change. When you are ready to execute the cell, press Ctrl and Enter, which will execute the cell in place. You can tell the cell is executed since the empty brackets will change to a number. This is the same as pressing play, only no new cell is added to the notebook. One of the best features of an IPython notebook is that a cell can be edited and re-executed. Clicking on the cell and using Control Enter will re-evaluate the cell, which changes the image since it is plotting the average of some simulated data. The cell can be repeatedly evaluated using Control and Enter, which changes the figure and also increments the number next to the in label. A more useful way to evaluate cells is to use Control Shift Enter 
or equivalently Alt-Enter, which will both evaluate the cell and start a new cell. It is also possible to evaluate all cells by selecting Cell from the menu and then Run All. This will reevaluate all cells in the order in which they appear in the notebook. Running all of the cells pops up the plot, and then it disappears, and then the remaining cells run. The cell numbers have also been incremented to reflect the reevaluation of each cell's contents. IPython Notebook executes against a hidden IPython kernel. This can be restarted to reset the session to the same state it had when the notebook was initially opened. Restarting the kernel will disconnect from the current kernel, stop the kernel, and then connect to a new kernel. This is similar to using the magic keyword reset. After restarting the kernel, evaluating all cells produces the same output only the cell numbers have changed and now start at 1. Working in the IPython notebook is similar to working in an IPython console session, and many useful features such as auto-completion are still available. For example, typing np dot and then tab will produce the list of all functions and submodules available in NumPy. This is a very large list since NumPy has a large API, and so continuing to type will reduce this list until a match is found. When the correct command is highlighted, tab can be used to autocomplete the selection. Autocomplete also works for modules which are not in PyLab although it is necessary to first import them by running a cell before the autocomplete will function. In this example, I import pandas as pd, but entering pd dot and then tab doesn't produce an autocomplete since pandas hasn't actually been imported. Using control and enter to evaluate the cell in place will then allow pd dot to be used with autocomplete. IPython will automatically scroll large output so that the browser doesn't fill up. Consider this simple for loop which will print the numbers between 1 and 1000. Running the cell doesn't fill the browser window since the output is scrolled. Clicking on the left side of the scroll window can be used to close the window or to remove the scroll. Help is available using a question mark and to see the help, the cell needs to be executed. The help appears at the bottom of the window and can be scrolled. There's a small amount of highlighting, but is mostly the plain doc string. Using two question marks will produce the function contents, just like in the usual IPython console. Array doesn't have much in this function, but pandas read CSV does. The help can be popped out into a new tab by clicking on the nested windows, and the help is closed by clicking on the X.
This video has demonstrated the basic use of IPython Notebook. While IPython Notebook can be used as a replacement for the IPython console, this isn't a particularly compelling application. More interesting uses of IPython Notebook mix Markdown, a special language for producing formatted text, and equations using LaTeX with Python code to produce formatted documents that are self-explanatory. The use of Markdown in math is demonstrated in another video.